Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to another video, and welcome to a video looking at the most expensive keyboard I've ever tested, the ROG Claymore, a keyboard that costs £200. Yeah, that's a lot of money. You could literally get a RX 480 for that, and you could be playing Battlefield 1 on ultra settings at 1080p, or you could just get a new keyboard. So for it to be good, it's going to have to be very good, and for it to be worth that price tag, it's going to have to be exceptional. So, is it any good? Well, let's start by taking a look at the design, which is really nice, make no mistake about it. This looks and feels like a really premium bit of kit. Of all the keyboards I've ever tested, this is the most sturdy, and this is by far the keyboard that has the least amount of flex of any I've ever tested. It's mainly made out of aluminium and plastic. The plastic is on the underside and the underside also features stands so that you can raise the keyboard up if you want to or of course reduce it down if you want it to sit flat. The cable is a lot thinner than you'll find on the likes of the Corsair K70 and is detachable and it is braided so if something goes wrong with it you can replace it. But the downside of having this thin cable is the fact that there is no USB pass-through. That was the reason why the cable was thicker on some of its competition, is to allow for a USB pass-through. So there's no additional USB ports on this keyboard. But the top of the keyboard is really, really nice. I mean, it looks like a, a Mayan-inspired design, I think is what they've described on their website. And it features sort of almost like tram lines like you find on a motherboard. And the RGB lighting is a lot better than on the Corsair K70, it's brighter, uh, it's not necessarily more customizable, but there's less sort of light separation and less light bleed from the individual colours. So if you go for a white colour on the Corsair K70 for an example, it sort of separates into its individual R, G and B components, whereas here it does come across as a nice white colour. There is still some separation, but it's nowhere near as bad, and I'd quite happily use a white colour on this without having to worry about any of those negative side effects. And then the keycaps themselves are nice and solid. Uh, they feel great uh, when you press down on them, but of course a lot of that is down to the switches that are used in the keyboard, which here are Cherry MX, and you get a nice wide selection of keys. The one I'm using here is Cherry MX Brown, which is of course going to be best for people that want to do typing and they want to game, but you've got a wide selection. You can go for a blue switch, a brown switch, a red switch, or a black switch, so you can choose your favourite and if you haven't yet decided what your favourite is, I say in every single keyboard video I do because it is so important, get yourself down to a local shop and start testing some Cherry MX switches because that's really the only way to know what ones will suit you. Now at this stage you're probably wondering what it is that makes this keyboard special, as yes it looks great, and yes it's a bit more compact than some others, but it sounds like pretty much every other RGB keyboard. Well there is one big difference, and that is that this comes in two flavours, the Claymore Core or the Full Claymore, and the difference is this thing, which is the number pad. And this is detachable, if you haven't already worked that one out, from the main keyboard and this can be attached to either the left side of the keyboard or the right side of the keyboard. And the advantage to this is that you can remove it when you're gaming if you want more space on your desk or you can place it on the left hand side and you can assign the uh, different numbers to macros and things like that. So it gives you a lot of flexibility without taking up a huge amount of space. So Corsair's latest K95 Platinum Edition has more features than this but it's a lot bigger and a lot of people want a smaller keyboard that has just as many features in which case you could do a lot of cool things with this. In practice though I find that the mechanism to attach it is brilliant but it does leave the number pad a little bit of... Uh, it wobbles a little bit if you press the corners and it's come out once or twice uh, when I've been using it which has been a little bit disappointing. I think it's a great feature but it's definitely something that you're going to have to want from a keyboard as personally I don't really mind having a fixed number pad on my keyboard and it's not something I ever have thought or oh, I wish that was missing. But for a lot of people it does give it will give you a lot of flexibility that I'm sure you will appreciate. 
Elsewhere on the keyboard you will find some additional features and the media keys do need to be controlled with the function key. So you have to press the function key and then you press play pause or play skip or whatever it is you want to do, which does take some getting used to, but it's fairly easy to do so. You've got a volume roller on the number pad as well. But then some unique things that you will not find elsewhere is actually pretty cool and that is that you can customise some features of your Asus motherboard just by pressing certain keys on your keyboard. So for instance you can change your fan profiles, you can boot straight into uh, your overclocker, things like that you can actually do on the keyboard themselves. There's a long list on the Asus website that I will leave in the description below if you do want more details. In terms of making moderations to the keyboard lighting and changing macro keys and what the keys on the keyboard do, this is all done in the Armoury software, which is fairly easy to use. I don't really have any complaints other than it's just not quite as easy to use and it's not quite as feature rich as other competing software, so like Logitech and Razer, I think their software is more advanced. And I think the reason for this is just down to the amount of peripherals they sell. They've had more time for development and they've had more times to more chances to sort of get this more polished. And going back to that point, a more important thing really is that if you do want to have a uh, sort of lifestyle of RGB, so everything on your desk is RGB and you can link it up, there, are, there aren't really that many choices um, in terms of other peripherals to go with the Claymore. For instance, Razer and Corsair have an RGB mouse mat, if that's your sort of thing. Asus don't do one. But then in terms of mice, there are a lot more mice that you can get for Corsair and Razer and Logitech, whereas you pretty much are stuck with the Spartha at the moment, which, don't get me wrong, it's a decent mouse, but like the Claymore, it's very expensive. And to pair these two together, you're looking at over three hundred pounds which is an insane amount of money and it's not something I would recommend that people do um, unless they're really committed to getting those peripherals so it's definitely something to bear in mind but in terms of the actual performance of the keyboard I really can't fault it at all assuming that you get the switch you want then it's just a blissful experience no matter what you're doing I do a lot of typing as I write up reviews for trusted reviews and I'm at university at the moment so I've got a lot of uni work to do and I've done pretty much most of it on the Claymore at the moment and it's a great thing to type on. Brand switch in particular is so flexible, you have a nice tactile bump whenever you're pressing a key, I find I'm making less mistakes than I would on a red switch, but when I switch over to gaming and I play something like Battlefield 1, I feel right at home, everything is nice and snappy and it's a nice rewarding experience. And if you've never tested a mechanical keyboard before, I highly recommend you do so. But I said this in my review over on Trusted Reviews, and I'm going to say it here. There are many good keyboards you can get for far less money than this. And the actual in-game performance is going to be similar. It's just things like RGB lighting, build quality and features that you are going to be missing out on. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking that the Claymore is going to be the best thing out there for gaming, it may well be but there are definitely a load of alternative options that will literally not cost an arm and a leg. And that's pretty much my conclusion of this keyboard. It's a fantastic keyboard, it's one of the best I've ever used. But for £200, you're going to have to want that design, you're going to have to want to buy into the Asus platform, and you're going to have to want to use the things like linking up to your graphics card and motherboard. Otherwise, to me, it just comes across as a really good but really expensive keyboard and competition is fierce and you can get a similar keyboard from Corsair, the Corsair K70 RGB for around about £140 in red, blue and brown switches or you can actually get it in a speed switch as well for an extra £10-£20. So that's personally what I'd recommend um, to a lot of people but there are loads of other good alternatives out there as well but if you are set on this keyboard I think you're going to be very happy with it. It's just a lot of money to spend and I'm not sure for most people is something you should do. Overall, this wins the Top Performer Award. And there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought. Um, thanks to Asus for actually uh, shipping out this keyboard uh, for review. Thanks to you guys for watching this review. And as always, thank you to Corsair for sponsoring the channel. Any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.